Elon Musk has just confirmed that Optimus Gen 3 will feature a completely new design, significantly different from the previous generation. This is not merely an upgrade, it's a full redesign aimed at turning the robot into a truly commercial product. Every detail from the skeletal frame to the sensors will be refined. Tesla is preparing to bring Optimus into everyday life and mass production. So, what makes the new Gen 3 design so different and important? Before we begin, please help us reach 9,500 subscribers. It will be a huge motivation for us to continue bringing you great episodes about Tesla Bot, Tesla EVs, and the latest news. What is the most anticipated design change in Gen 3? So many improvements to come in the next design of Optimus. Tesla is preparing to enter an entirely new stage of development for its humanoid robot, Optimus, with the Gen 3 design expected to bring major changes in structure, features, and large-scale production capabilities. The improvements already evident in Optimus Gen 2, from reduced weight and increased walking speed to an upgraded hand with 22 degrees of freedom, form the foundation for what Tesla is aiming to achieve in the next generation. Gen 3 will not simply be an upgraded version but a major leap in design aimed at bringing humanoid robots into real-world scenarios and enabling mass production at optimized cost. According to Elon Musk, Optimus Gen 3 will feature significant upgrades in overall design to improve operational efficiency and scalability. These changes are not just intended to make the robot faster and smarter, but also to standardize its structure for easy mass production an essential requirement for rolling out hundreds of thousands of units annually, with a production target of over 100,000 Optimus units next year. Tesla needs a modular, highly integrated design that can be assembled by other robots on automated production lines. Therefore, Gen 3 will be heavily refined for manufacturability, similar to how Tesla simplified electric vehicle design to accommodate gigapress production for car bodies. The core of the Gen 3 design will focus on weight optimization, flexibility, and autonomy. In Generation 2, Tesla managed to reduce about 22 pounds compared to the first generation, significantly improving speed and agility. Gen 3 will likely be even lighter, built with advanced materials like ultralight aluminum alloys or carbon composites, to ensure durability and optimal performance. The actuator and sensor systems will also be further compacted and more deeply integrated into the robot's skeleton, both to reduce costs and to improve motion precision. In addition, the hand design, already a major highlight in Gen 2 with its 22 degrees of freedom, will continue to be improved to handle more delicate tasks such as welding, assembling electronic circuits, or operating in tight spaces. Musk has previously emphasized that the hand of Optimus will be one of the most crucial components in making the robot truly useful in real-world environments, such as factories, retail spaces, and even homes. Notably, Gen 3 will feature even deeper integration with Tesla's central AI system, using human video-based learning to dramatically shorten training time. Tesla's shift from remote-controlled operation to video-based training offers a significant advantage, allowing each robot to learn new tasks much faster. This demands that Gen 3's design be capable of fast image and sensor data processing, along with real-time feedback mechanisms for each action, from the smallest gestures like pressing a microwave button to complex movements like yoga poses or bending down to pick up an object. Beyond the technical aspects, Gen 3's design will also prioritize aesthetics and user-friendliness. For robots to be accepted in everyday life, they need to appear approachable, non-threatening, and easy to interact with. This means Tesla will have to adjust both the robot's physical appearance and its body language to make it feel more natural and socially acceptable. Once again, please help us reach 9,500 subscribers. This is important for us to stay motivated. Thank you. What sets the Gen 3 hand design apart from previous versions? The hand is arguably the most complex and symbolic part of any humanoid robot. And with Optimus Gen 3, Tesla has completely re-engineered this crucial component to deliver a level of dexterity, precision, and adaptability that far surpasses earlier versions. Unlike the simplistic, rigid hands of Generation 1 and Generation 2, which were limited to basic gripping, the new Gen 3 hand features a highly advanced structure that allows each finger to move independently through multiple joints. 
This configuration enables the robot to replicate human hand movements with remarkable accuracy, from picking up tiny objects like pins to handling delicate items such as eggs or glassware. The fingers bend naturally at knuckles and joints, closely mimicking human tendons and muscle structure, making Optimus capable of performing fine motor tasks with high reliability. One of the most groundbreaking advancements is the integration of tactile sensors embedded within each finger. These sensors give the robot the ability to feel texture, pressure, and contact, allowing it to adjust its grip strength dynamically based on the object's material, weight, and fragility. This real-time sensory feedback combined with force feedback mechanisms prevents accidental damage and ensures safe handling. Whether folding clothes, sorting parts, or assisting an elderly person, the Gen 3 hand intuitively knows how much pressure to apply. Something previous robotic systems struggled to achieve without complex external inputs. Tesla's design also emphasizes durability and maintenance efficiency. Each component of the hand is modular meaning fingers or joints can be replaced individually without dismantling the entire system. This modular approach supports scalable manufacturing and lowers repair costs, a vital factor for widespread commercial and household deployment. The materials used are lightweight yet durable, likely a combination of carbon-reinforced polymers and aerospace-grade aluminum, ensuring both speed and resilience. Moreover, the hand is built to operate continuously without overheating, supported by a passive cooling system optimized for extended factory use or home tasks. In real-world use, these advanced hands have already proven their value. Tesla has tested Optimus Gen 3 in its own factories, where the robot performs tasks like picking up components, tightening screws, and manipulating wiring, all of which demand far more finesse than simple strength. In the home, this unlocks an entirely new range of possibilities. Cooking, making the bed, helping people with limited mobility, or even assisting in medical therapy. With such fine control and awareness, Optimus is no longer just a functional tool. It's a potential partner in both work and life. Why is Tesla redesigning the Gen 3 bot instead of keeping the Gen 2 design? Tesla's decision to fundamentally redesign its Optimus humanoid robot for Generation 3, rather than building incrementally upon the Gen 2 framework, signals a bold transition in the company's strategy. From prototyping for internal validation to engineering a product ready for deployment at scale, this shift is not merely about cosmetic or minor performance upgrades. It's a redefinition of what the robot must be in order to succeed in the real world. Gen 2 while a significant milestone, was limited by constraints that no longer align with Tesla's ambition to manufacture hundreds of thousands of units per year and deploy them across varied environments. The Gen 2 robot served as a research platform, primarily intended for internal testing and proof-of-concept demonstrations. It allowed Tesla to explore key mechanical principles, bipedal locomotion, motor control, balance, and basic task execution. However, Gen 2's design was never optimized for practical long-term deployment. It carried many elements that were ideal for development agility, but inefficient for durability, cost, or manufacturability. These include excessive wiring, non-standardized actuators, exposed components, and materials not suitable for long-term use. If Tesla had kept the same architecture in Gen 3, it would have severely limited the robot's potential in terms of efficiency, production cost, safety, and ease of repair. Another driving force behind the redesign is the need for purpose-built architecture to support Tesla's rapidly evolving software stack and AI infrastructure. As Tesla leans into neural network training using video footage of human activity, the physical form of the robot must adapt accordingly. This isn't just a question of flexibility or joint count, it's about spatial harmony between AI perception and mechanical capability. Generation 3 must allow for more fluid, reactive motion in response to AI inference. That means re-engineering limb lengths, joint placements, weight distribution, and sensor integration. For instance, the camera positions on Gen 2 may have worked for static perception, but Gen 3 needs to optimize field of view, depth estimation, and proprioception during motion all of which demand structural changes to the head, neck, 
and torso. Thermal management and energy efficiency are also key motivators for the redesign. Gen 2, like many early prototypes, was not optimized for passive or active cooling under continuous load. It could perform brief, impressive tasks like folding laundry or performing squats, but sustained activity would lead to heat buildup and component degradation. For Generation 3, Tesla is pursuing a design that enables six to eight hours of continuous operation, aligning with real-world use cases such as warehouse assistance, household chores, or light-duty factory work. This necessitates a full rethink of internal component layout, the use of lighter structural materials, and more efficient distribution of onboard computing systems. Furthermore, the durability and safety requirements for Gen 3 are vastly different. Tesla plans to deploy Optimus in uncontrolled, dynamic environments, including factories, offices, and homes, where the robot will be in constant proximity to people, furniture, tools, and unpredictable obstacles. Generation 2 was never tested for high-impact resilience, dust resistance, or fluid exposure. Gen 3 must therefore incorporate robust chassis enclosures, redundant fail-safes, and improved collision detection. A more compact and modular internal structure is also required to simplify maintenance and allow part replacement without disassembling large sections of the robot. These are not adjustments that can be grafted onto an existing design. They require a foundational rebuild. Tesla's experience with automotive manufacturing is another key influence. The company has repeatedly emphasized the advantages of vertically integrated design, from gigacasting vehicle bodies to optimizing wire harness layouts. In Genesis 3, this mindset is being extended to robotics. Fewer parts, less wiring, more shared modules, and a unified architecture that allows Tesla's automated production lines to build and test robots as easily as they build cars. This transition demands not just mechanical simplification, but also software-hardware unification. Generation 2 had legacy elements from disparate suppliers and test phase engineering. Gen 3, by contrast, will be natively Tesla-built, from motor to chip, using a production-oriented design language. Beyond technical motivations, the redesign also reflects an evolution in product vision. Gen 2 was never intended as a commercial product. It was a platform to demonstrate that Tesla could build a humanoid robot that walks and performs tasks. But Gen 3 must go far beyond that. It needs to serve real customers, deliver ROI for businesses, and meet consumer expectations for safety, reliability, and ease of use. For example, humans expect robots to interact with objects naturally, walk smoothly across various surfaces, and operate in tight spaces all of which require careful rebalancing of limb proportions, control algorithms, and even the tactile materials used in exterior components. Generation 2 fell short in these areas due to its utilitarian, lab-focused nature. Lastly, Gen 3's redesign allows Tesla to implement a forward-compatible platform, one that can support future software upgrades, tool attachments, and even modular add-ons for specific industries. Whether it's a gripper for logistics, a vision system for inspection, or a voice interface for domestic tasks, Gen 3 must be ready to evolve. A rigid Gen 2-derived design would have limited this adaptability, forcing future versions to compromise or rework key subsystems. Starting fresh with Generation 3R ensures the bot's platform is flexible enough to accommodate years of iterative upgrades without constant re-engineering. In summary, Tesla is not redesigning Gen 3 simply for aesthetic or performance gains. It is doing so because the Gen 2 design has already reached the limits of its usefulness. To meet the demands of mass production, AI integration, long-term durability, and real-world deployment, a new foundation was essential. Gen 3 is Tesla's pivot from a promising prototype to a scalable product. And just like Tesla rewrote the rules of electric car design to suit its long-term mission, the company is now reshaping the robot itself, structurally, functionally, and strategically, to ensure that Optimus will not only work, but truly thrive in the world it's being built to serve. We appreciate your contributions and hope you will have the most relaxing feelings after watching this video. If you did, 
please hit the like button and join the Techno Creator family by subscribing to our channel. And don't miss out on any of our awesome videos by hitting the bell icon. We value your feedback and your time. Thank you so much for watching, and we'll see you soon. Until then, stay safe and have fun.